We have an obligation as the leadership, as parents, as individual members of a community to remember. Anti-war demonstrators protest U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. To know our history. The 60s were not that long ago when people were fighting for basic rights. If we can remember where we came from, then we will know where we're headed. As the community clinic movement approaches the half-century mark of activity, the vision of the founding generation will be passed on to a new generation. The world changes, our communities change, but the wellspring of leadership for community clinics remains the same. It comes from individuals who have taken the time to reflect upon their personal biography and to do so within the context of the community they serve. Somebody once said, why don't you just do advocacy? Why do you have to provide care every day? You have the headaches of all these people getting care. And I said, the power of our clinic is that we care for people and we bother people to say, how dare you leave folks behind? That's not acceptable. You wouldn't accept that for your, your parent or child. It is not acceptable. With leadership grounded in biography, both personal and community, the community clinic movement can look forward to another half century of progress and activity. We watch as 20, 40 years later that health centers have become recognized as the essential part of the healthcare system. It just shows that you know the people in the 60s and 70s who sort of came up with these notions were incredibly forward thinking and that's really a gift we've received from them and then it's our obligation to keep that alive. It's not just a job, it's not just providing a service, it's connecting people to what they need because we know how hard it is. But I do think it's a place of hope. Very good. <laughs>